have an unboxing for you today. I am going to be talking through my first impressions and unboxing of the Hemlock and Oak Undated Planner today. I'm Jessica at Pretty Prints and Paper. I talk about bullet journaling, creative planning, and some other things like brush calligraphy and alcohol ink. So let's see what's in here. I know I said 365 day freeze on buying new planner stuff, but for some reason this planner called out to me and I wanted to check it out. So um, looking at their colors, teal, I'm already into it and loving some of these cute cards that come with this package. Um, small, small business and one of the things that I really enjoyed about this company is that they were trying to make an intentional choice around some of the labor practices and manufacturing so that it was more ethical and environmental. So I noticed that they say that it's plastic free to avoid contributing to the plastic waste and little things like that definitely appeal to me. So um, this pre-order came with some stickers. So these are some neutral, functional stickers with these tabs. Oh, I have never seen a notebook wrapped like this before. It's got like this kind of strap around it. And you can even tell the tape isn't like a usual tape either. I hate unwrapping these pretty things. I just want to like keep it as pretty as possible. <laughs> uh, does anybody else like keep the tissue paper and wrapping paper off of gifts they receive and reuse it? Because that's totally me. Okay, that was intense. <laughs> Just feeling this. Um, designed and made in Canada. Undated 12 months weekly planner. Uh, 80 pound paper, so we'll see about the ghosting in here. And then 192 pages. It's 6.5 inches by 8.5 inches. I love the essence of this quote because it just reminds you of how thoughtful and um, cultivating your yourself over time and how you could plant a seed and that it takes some time for it to grow. Oh, I'm loving some of these quotes. The paper's this really lovely bright white and you can tell that it's really carefully created with some of these quotes and focus on self-care. Introspection. You know I love that shit. I've, sometimes people are like, wow, you ask such deep questions. And I, it doesn't really occur to me as that. It just, I'm really curious about how people work and how you yourself work. And so some of the questions that I think about are definitely more reflective. Mindset framing. Oh, these are some unique exercises that I don't often see in planners. Goal creation. I love that it breaks down the value of a goal, like the values that a goal supports. I don't like to make goals just to make goals, but it has to mean something to me and not to other people. Not necessarily. Okay. Attainable habits. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. My ideal day. I like that this is just like open, somewhat structured to give you a foothold, but then enough free flowing that you can do what you need. Year at a glance, a horizontal. Okay. I'm kind of loving this. Okay. Month. It's kind of clear that the focus is really cultivating your self knowledge and self care. Ooh, oh, look at this. <laughs> Grid, notes on the left, some that are 
check boxes. So who knows? You, you can always cover that up with a sticker. Setting your intention for the beginning of the month. There's quotes on mostly every page. Okay, so all the months are together in the front, similar to like a passion planner undated, which is fine. You just have to really pay attention to where the months are. Oh, look at that annual planning and reflection. Okay, this was one of the reasons why I was really into this. Let me zoom in. I really appreciate the vertical layout, obviously, that there's um, goals, values, and then tasks. Values is a different kind of take than I usually see in a planner, but this is the way my brain works. So that's how I decide what planners to buy because it already is laid out in a way that my brain thinks. So I could use the time chart. I'm not getting up at six in the morning though. And then uh, um, it goes down to the bottom where it becomes more open-ended. I love that it doesn't have necessarily a hard line down here because that means that you can use it as a whole strip, as a whole box under here or underneath each individual day. Loving that. I also like that it's not stark black because it just makes it easier on the eyes and you, it makes it easier to adjust the boxes to whatever you need it to be. Mm, okay. And then in the back, some notes pages that are a light grid. I am really digging this. I think I would really miss my dailies, so I'm maybe gonna think about that. But I just, I don't know why. There's just something about this that called out to me and I really wanted to, one, support the small business, trying to make intentional, sustainable choices and um, just the appeal of it. And then the last thing that's down here is a ruler for the monthly tabs. Thank goodness. That is really helpful. I try to eyeball it and it just never works out. So this is just a, a, a beautiful, classy planner. And I mean, I don't see a lot of advertisements for this, but I'm really appreciating just kind of the intention behind it. And I'm I'm going to see if I can find a way to use it. Maybe it's a smaller version of the weekly that is nice to bring around, but we'll see what happens with it. I'll let you know. Do you have any questions? Okay, obviously I love the, the aesthetic of it. Let me know your questions down below. Have you ever seen this before? What kinds of things do you keep at the front of your mind when you're buying a planner? Have you learned lessons from the past that tell you if this is a good idea or not? Let me know in the comments. Um, I'll try to answer those questions. If you like this video or have other things that you want me to review, go ahead and uh, let me know. Like, subscribe, share, whatever. I just hope that you enjoy it. I will see you in my next video. Bye.